you and I are going to unpack a decision that will quietly shape security in the Baltic for years to come. In today's video, we're looking at Poland's Orca program, the push to select a new conventional submarine by year's end, and why that choice matters far beyond shipyards and spreadsheets. I'll walk you through the context, the field of contenders, and the trade-offs that will ultimately define success. Then I want your take in the comments, which package makes the most sense for Poland. Poland's undersea problem is simple to state and hard to solve. The Navy has essentially one aging kilo-class boat, ORP Orzel, a holdover from a different era with limited availability. The common class is gone, and that leaves Warsaw without a dependable underwater presence at a time when the Baltic is dense with sensors, patrols, and competing interests. Orca isn't just a shopping trip, it's an attempt to rebuild a credible, persistent deterrent under the waves while anchoring industrial skills at home. The twist is that Poland isn't merely buying a submarine, it is choosing a partnership. Officials have asked multiple countries to outline not only their boats but also their willingness to transfer know-how and localize production with Polska Grupa's Brzeginiowa. That means training pipelines, documentation, integration rights, and the ability to upgrade sensors and weapons on Poland's timeline, not just a screwdriver assembly line. If you followed Warsaw's wider modernization, signals intelligence ships launched, Mieksnik frigates moving ahead, you can see the logic, submarines are the stealthy piece that completes a more balanced force. Now for the brief comparative overview you came for. Germany's ThyssenKrupp marine systems offers the Type 212 family, a benchmark in European non-nuclear design with a deep operational record and strong sustainment. If Poland prioritizes interoperability with regional fleets and a mature support ecosystem, this is an obvious yardstick. Italy's Fincantieri brings the U-212 NFS, an evolution tuned to new requirements, its edge is a bid tightly coupled to industrial cooperation, positioning Poland to capture meaningful workshare and life cycle expertise. Sweden's Saab puts forward the A26 Blecking, optimized for literal operations, think modular architecture, low signatures, and tools tailored to the shallow, cluttered Baltic. For a navy that needs silent patrols and flexible payloads, A26's design philosophy is compelling. France's naval group proposes Scorpine, a proven export line known for adaptable combat systems and a reputation for flexible industrial packages. If customization and a broad menu of sensor and weapons options are priorities, Scorpine can be shaped to fit. Spain's Navancha enters with the S-80, bringing modern systems and its own pathway to local cooperation, this is attractive if Poland wants to diversify partners while still locking incredible technology. South Korea's Hanwha Ocean offers the KSS-3, an ambitious platform paired with financing structures designed to soften near-term costs, given Warsaw's recent land and rocket deals with Seoul, the trust and tempo already established could translate to the maritime domain. The UK's Babcock has also signaled interest, adding another political industrial vector that may influence sustainment and integration choices. If that sounds like a close race, it is, because the winner won't be crowned by a single spec sheet. Submarines are systems of systems that must be judged in bundles, acoustic discretion, sensor fusion, combat system maturity, energy solutions, from AIP to advanced batteries, and weapons options including anti-ship and potential land attack missiles. But technology is only half the story. Delivery schedules, training pipelines, spares availability, and enforceable local work share will decide whether Poland can keep two or three boats ready for operations at any given time. In the Baltic, one submarine in the right place at the right moment can shift the calculus more than a larger but unreliable fleet. Another lens is sovereignty. A good deal grants Poland real agency over upgrades and integration, so when new torpedoes, unmanned teaming concepts, or improved sonars arrive, the Navy can adopt them without waiting on foreign priorities. That requires clean documentation, exportable interfaces, and legal room to maneuver. The most attractive proposals will balance performance with predictable, open sustainment, 
rather than locking Poland into expensive proprietary corridors. Financing and risk sharing matter as well. Creative credit lines and performance based support can align incentives over decades, but they have to protect freedom of action. A discount that delays deliveries or limits future upgrades is a false economy. Conversely, a slightly pricier bid that delivers earlier, trains crews faster, and embeds genuine industrial competence may pay for itself in availability and deterrence. So here's my bottom line for you. Orca isn't about picking a universally best submarine, it's about selecting a coherent partnership that gets capable hulls to see quickly, keeps them quiet and lethal through midlife, and gives Poland real control over modernization. If you value regional interoperability and a deep sustainment bench, the German and Italian paths look strong. If the Baltic's peculiar demands and modular growth top your list, Sweden's A26 is hard to ignore. If flexibility in industrial packaging is paramount, France and Spain offer credible routes. And if financing plus proven political momentum sway the outcome, South Korea's pitch is a live contender. That's the overview for today's video, context, options, and the trade-offs that matter. Now I want to hear from you, which bid best balances capability, sovereignty, and speed for Poland's Baltic mission. Drop your pick and your reasoning in the comments so we can dive deeper in a follow-up.